morning dear student friends today we are going to discuss about the centrifugal pumps in the previous lecture series we have seen the impact of the jets and how it is essential or how it is applicable in the pumps and the turbines after that we had seen the different types of the turbines their working efficiencies etc etc we had seen now we are going to look for the centrifugal pumps uh today we are going to discuss about the parts or uh, contents we can say the first one is the pump what is mean, uh, meaning of the pump then general classification of the pumps classification of centrifugal pumps component parts of the centrifugal pumps along with that component parts we are going to discuss about their functions also is why they are used in the pump then work done by impeller it is how much amount of the work is done by the impeller on the water and inlet outlet velocity triangles after that we are going to discuss about the heads and the efficiencies of the centrifugal pump and and lastly we are going to cover the some of the numericals so firstly we'll discuss about the pump here we are finding that this is a sketch of the pump Uh, this is the a sketch of the a pump which shows its uh, parts so in the parts of the pump we are finding that this is the a casing which is a cut section we are shown here in this is a, a casing which covers the rotating element which is essentially required for the imparting centrifugal force to the liquid and this rotating element is called as impeller this is the eye of the impeller and those two parts that is the coverings of the impeller we can say that is the outer one and in, in external and internal those are called called as a shrouds this is the eye of the impeller and this is the portion which is provided for the attachment of the pipes this is one section and this is another section which is provided for attaching the pipes this section is called as a inlet section and this is called as a outlet section this is also called as a suction point this is called as a delivery point so through through this the water will be sucked and pipes will be connected we are going to see in the details so this is a casing this is the impeller and this is a shaft this is a shaft which is connected to the impeller and here at the backward side we are finding that there is a mechanism which is called as a motor or any prime mover will be there which is going to impart the mechanical energy which is going to rotate this rotodynamic element this is a impeller so this is a general general things about the a pump now we'll see what is mean by a pump exactly what is its a definition so the pump is nothing but an hydraulic machine which converts the mechanical energy to the hydraulic energy so it is exactly works in a opposite sense that of the turbines so turbines were the machines or are the machines which converts the hydraulic energy of the water to the mechanical energy so for example here we will have an inlet through this and outlet through this in that case this inlet will have the high pressure head with along with the water and this will act as an a jet and this is going to apply that water or it is going to direct the water to the vein to the vents and vents after striking the water they will start the rotating that is nothing but a turbine but in case of the pumps the pumps are the hydraulic machines which converts the mechanical energy to the hydraulic energy means after rotating this element by a mechanical means it is going to suck the water and it is going to impart the hydraulic energy to that water here after i am going to consider the fluid as a water so whenever it is going to rotate it is going to impart the hydraulic energy to that water and that hydraulic energy may be the kinetic energy or maybe the pressure energy or combination of them so in general we can say that the pump is a hydraulic machine which converts the mechanical energy to the hydraulic energy now we'll see that the what are the classifications or before proceeding that the another one 
main important aspect of the pumps is that in case of the pumps the whatever the flow takes place that flow takes place from low pressure energy to the high pressure energy here there exist a negative pressure head we are going to discuss that how is it should be so this is a suction point it means that the pressure will be the below atmospheric and this is a delivery point it means that there will be the pressure above the atmosphere it means that this is a low pressure point and this is the a high pressure point comparatively it means that the flow takes place from a low pressure to the high pressure and there is a reduction in the kinetic energy of the velocity that is the retardation we can say or the deacceleration we can say that is the flow is a deaccelerated flow in the pumps whereas in the turbines the flow is a accelerated flow this is the uh, main difference we can say between the pumps and turbines the next one is the classification general classification will discuss firstly first one is the roto dynamic pumps the roto dynamic means what the roto is nothing but the for the rotation dynamics uh, roto is nothing but the rotation and uh, rotating in a dynamic nature means dynamics is nothing but the application of the force when there is a rotation means the element which is going to rotate it is going to impart a force that is a centrifugal force and whatever the pumps those used to have and such type of the rotating element this is a rotating element there is a impeller so the pumps those used to consist of a impeller those are generally considered as an rotodynamic pumps that is increase in a energy level due to the combination of centrifugal force pressure energy and the kinetic energy or the both of them we can that is nothing but the rotodynamic pumps so uh, rotodynamic pumps are having the different types that is a radial flow axial flow and mixed flow a radial flow this is the example of a radial flow the flow comes from this end and it moves radially outward so this is a radial flow in case of axial flow flow comes from this end and comes out from this end and mixed combination and example for the rotodynamic pumps is a centrifugal pumps the second type of the pumps general pumps is the positive displacement pumps that is used to consist of the piston and the cylinder mechanism and those are called as a reciprocating pump here after we are going to concentrate only on the centrifugal pumps so we'll uh, go for next part that is the classification of the centrifugal pumps the first classification is uh, based on the type of the casing which is provided so in the previous slide we had seen the casing the casing is nothing but the compartment we can say which encloses the rotodynamic element that is a impeller so the first type is the vortex casing pump means if the casing is a vortex now what does it mean about the vortex casing so vortex casing is that casing which used to increase in its uh, diameter from one end to the another end so we will consider this is a one end this is a rotating element this is impeller and this is a casing so here we are finding that the gap between impeller and casing is so less and while moving in anti clockwise direction the gap is going on increasing and increasing and whenever it used to take place or whenever the that casing used to have such type of the shape which is increasing in a order in anti clockwise direction or clockwise direction that type of casing is called as a volute casing the second one is the vortex casing so generally we are knowing that what is been by a vortex the vortex is the a uh, circular motion or where the point where the maximum concentration is to take place that in general we used to talk about the vortex so vortex casing is nothing but the casing which used to have a some slot or some portion round the impeller or that is called as a chamber that chamber is called as a vortex chamber and the vortex chamber is used to reduce the kinetic energy and to increase the pressure energy and whenever we used to have such type of the mechanism that is a, a vortex chamber or a casing around the impeller inside the main casing then that casing is called as a vortex casing or vortex chamber the obviously now the change in energy takes place at the maximum rates there is a change in energy means from the centrifugal force that is a force to the that is velocity we can say that is 1/2 mv square mass will be constant so v will be the kinetic energy that is a, a kinetic energy there and we have to convert it into the 
pressure energy so as there is a guide mechanism there will be the increase in the pressure energy and decrease in the kinetic energy than that of the fluid casing it means that whenever we used to have the cortex casing there will be the efficiency at the higher rates than that of the fluid casing the next type of the uh, pump as per the type of the casing is the casing with the guide vanes that is also called as the turbines because in the turbines we had seen that for the guiding the water towards the vanes we used to have the guide vanes or it is also called as a diffusion pump so in a diffusion pump there exist a a ring which used to consist of on different vanes and those vanes are called as a guide vanes so instead of the diffusion chamber here we are going to call it as an chamber of a guide vanes and that is exactly close to the our impeller so when impeller is going to rotate in this anti clockwise direction your direction is shown so water coming out from the impeller it will it will move or it will be escaped in this direction and when it is will be escaped it will strike to the guide vane so kinetic energy will be reduced and it will directed towards the casing and ultimately towards the outlet point it means that there is again a chance of increase in a pressure energy and decrease in a kinetic energy so to so the enhancements in the type of the casings are to increase the pressure energy and decrease the kinetic energy it means that if we used to move from the volute casing to the vortex and vortex casing and the diffusion pump in that case the there is a increase in the change in kinetic energy that is a reduction in kinetic energy and increase in the pressure energy the next type is the as per the working heads so we used to talk about the number of the times the pump is not lifting the water up to its capacity what does it means about the whenever the impellers are designed for a particular head so in general what happens whenever the gap between the impeller and the casing is less in that case there results in a increase in the pressure energy and decrease in the kinetic energy at the higher rates and to achieve that we used to move move towards the vortex chamber and towards the guide vanes diffusion pumps so whenever the gap is less in that case the water which will be delivered at the point where we want to have that point and the point from where we are lifting it goes on increasing with decrease in the gap between the impeller and pump this is the general type we can say so in ancient days there used to exist a, a coupled pumps we used to have a coupling that is a, another that is example of the pumps itself but they used to have a maximum discharge at lower head and in those in those pumps the impellers are of small impellers of a larger dimension and also the casing is also of a larger dimension so in that case we used to get the maximum head maximum discharge at less heads so the uh, pumps those are working up to the 15 meters it means that from the delivery points they are able to discharge the water at their designed rate up to the 15 meters means we will consider top point here and this is a discharge point so from this point to the this point if the distance is 15 meter and if the pump is providing the discharge at its designed capacity at this point then this pump is called as low head so 15 meters head that is a working head or delivery head is considered to be an a low head pumps whereas the medium head pumps are the pumps those used to deliver the water in between 15 to 40 meters it means that the head is now increasing so whenever you used to have the pumps in the bore wells or the pumps those we used to use in the households for lifting the water from the a uh, sump to the uh, tanks those are provided at the slabs or at the topmost portion for lifting those waters who is to prefer them so medium head pumps are working in between 15 meters to the 14 40 meters and the next pump is the high head pumps so high head pumps are above 40 meters so the whenever we want to lift the water at more than 40 meters in that case we have to go for a high head pumps the next classification that is a third one we can say this is as per the relative direction of the flow through the impeller means how the water is getting directed when it is moving from the one point to the another point that is from the eye of the impeller to the outlet point and as per that the pumps are the radial flow axial flow and mixed flow in previous slide we had seen there is a radial flow 
that is the diagram which i had shown there in that is the radial flow that is a, from the center to the center of the eye or uh, eye of the impeller to the periphery or towards the casing that is a radial flow axial flow from the axis one end of the axis to the another end and mixed flow that is a combination the next one is the number of entrances to the impeller means uh, in general we used to have an uh, only one inlet point that is eye of the impeller we used to talk about if only single entry is provided for the inlet of the water in that case it is called a single suction pump if two or more than that or generally double entry or a double suction double points are provided or two point two inlet points are provided in that case those pumps are called as a double suction pumps that is the axial thrust for neutralization of the axial thrust and nothing else than that and those are implied for the high discharges so whenever we used to have or we used to want to have a high discharge in that case the axial thrust generated by the water will be the more and more so to reduce that we have to have the two entry ports the next classification is as per the dispositioning of the shaft uh so before that uh, we'll discuss about the classification as as per the number of impellers per shaft generally whatever the pumps we used to use those are single stage pumps and they are single stage centrifugal pumps means the they are having only one impeller over the shaft one impeller one stage that is a single stage they are used for a low lift means their working head are not that much high but whenever we want to lift the water or whenever we want to deliver the water from a one point to the another point and those two points are far apart there exists a high elevation difference in that case those single stage pumps fails to work they doesn't fails to work but they fails to give a discharge at a outlet for which they are designed so in those cases we used to go for a multi stage centrifugal pumps in multi stage centrifugal pumps we used to use two or more than two impellers and generally those pumps are the pumps those are used in the bore wells etc it means that whatever the pumps we used to use in the bore wells those are multi stage centrifugal pumps having more than two or more than two impellers mounted on a single shaft the next classification that is a dispositioning as per the dispositioning of the shaft the first one is the horizontal shaft and second one is the vertical shaft so whatever the monoblock pumps and the pumps those are there in the uh, general wells is dugout wells all those are horizontal shaft pumps means they are having the pumps which we have seen in the first uh, second slide that is a horizontal shaft and there is a rotating element here that is mechanism is a horizontal shaft and second type is a vertical shaft that is a pumps those are in a bore well that is multi stage pumps used to have the vertical shaft and impellers will be mounted 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc in the vertical direction those pumps are called as a vertical shaft pumps again the pumps are also classified as a monoblock pumps then pumps those monoblock pumps are the pumps those are above the water they are not direct those are working from the top surface of the wells in general the next classification is the as per the liquid handling system that is the liquid handling system in the pumps is nothing but the impeller now impellers are going to handle the liquid they are going to suck and they are going to deliver is they are going to suck the water at a low pressure and they are going to deliver it by at a, a high pressure that is from negative pressure to the positive pressure we can say and conversion of the energy from kinetic energy to the potential energy that is a pressure energy so as per that as per their mechanism that is as per the mechanism of the impellers the pumps are classified as closed impeller pumps they are called as shrouded on both the sides semi open impellers are shrouded on one side and open impeller are having the blades open from both the sides we will see that uh, how they are looks like this is a shrouded that is a, a covering mechanism to the uh, impeller takes place or the vanes takes place from both the sides then semi open 
the shrouded portion exists only from a one side and a third one is the open impeller that is no shrouding portion or no covering is to exist for the fans fans are open now we'll see in details how they looks like so first one this is a open impeller here we are finding that the fans are open that is there is no cover from this top portion one can say and from the bottom portion also this open impeller or open blades or open fans we can say the second is a semi open impeller in semi open impeller we are finding that now here a shroud is there that is a covering is there from the bottom surface and top surface is open and in the third one it is a closed impeller or the shrouded impeller that is shrouded on both the sides the covering is on both the side this is a one shroud or one closing compartment and this is another shroud from the other side and in between that there exist or there are fans provided so this is nothing but the closed impeller covering surface from both the sides semi open impeller covering portion that is a shroud from one side and open impeller there is a no shroud so how to select the select the type of the impeller so whenever we used to have the liquids or the fluids of a uh, higher viscosities in that case we have to go for open impeller whenever viscosity is somewhat less we have to go for a semi open and whenever there is a less impurities or less viscosity in that case generally we have to go for closed impeller so this is one so this will be used for the lifting uh, of the muds etc this will be used for the somewhat uh, liquids those are having a higher liquids those are having a somewhat a somewhat less uh, viscosity than that of the liquids those are used uh, those will be lifted by the open impeller that is the muds etc then uh, for this closed impeller they will be implemented for the lifting of the water generally so this is about the as per the water handling system that is a closed impeller or semi closed and open impeller the next classification we are going to uh, discuss about next uh, part rather this this is all about the classification of centrifugal pumps and another one is a monoblock pumps that is a pumps those are those used to be stayed at the dry portion and it is above the wells and the another one is that is a, those are submer submerized there is a submersible pumps rather we can say so submersible pumps and the monoblock pumps submersible pumps are submerged in the water whereas monoblock pumps is to exist or stay above the wells of the wells uh, next part we are going to uh, discuss about the component parts of the centrifugal pumps so different component parts firstly we will go through the uh, sketch only so this is the impeller that we have discussed already this is the a casing this is the shaft then this is a suction pipe which is connected to the uh, inlet end inlet end in to the inlet end the pipe is connected that is a suction pipe suction pipe means there is exist a negative pressure and to measurement of the negative pressure we used to have the vacuum gauge then the suction pipe will be uh, submerged in a liquid from which we want to suck it so here this is a liquid or a sump or a simply we can say a well and this is a top surface of the liquid in a sump then to this a suction pipe we are finding that here is a wall and that wall is called as a foot wall and here is a strainer at the lower most portion so why to provide the wall so whenever the centrifugal pump used to lift the water or the suck the water in that case when there will be uh, when we want to close the operation when we, we want to shut down the operation if we will uh, switch up the motor in that case the rotation of the impeller will stop and in that case whatever the water will, has been lifted in upward direction it will come in the downward direction so there will be the water hammer effect water hammer effect and also the whatever the lifted water quantity of the mass of the water will be there it will be again come to the sump so to avoid that we have to have a foot wall that is one purpose second purpose of the foot wall for the monoblock pumps especially is to maintain the water up to the delivery point or delivery 
head we can say or the delivery uh, pressure gauge so here we are finding the delivery wall so from the delivery wall to the inside the casing that is a inside the hole all the veins that is in the impeller and in this suction pipe we have to maintain the water in that procedure uh, we are going to discuss in details and uh, to maintain that water it means that when we are going to shut down the pump in that case water has to be remain up to this point at least up to this point and to do so or to achieve so we have to have a foot wall now it means that if the wall is provided then in that case or oh, whenever we want to start we have to open it and whenever we want to stop the pump we have to close it does it means that it's not means that it means that also but it's not it will not be possible to us to go there in inside the water and we have to close and we have to open so we have to go for the again the technology so in the technology we are going to use here the open so, sorry one sided wall it means that when we, when there will be the suction the wall will get open and whenever there will be the closing of the pump it means that a reverse direction reverse flow in the downward direction that wall will be get closed so this will be the there will be the flange circular that as the pipe is a circular so flange will be circular due to the negative pressure or the suction the flange will be get open ultimately so it will from this horizontal position it will be there will be the grooves provided here the platform will be provided here and during the closed portion it will be uh, purely horizontal and whenever there is a suction in that case it will be lifted due to the negative pressure or sucking of the water in in a upward direction and it will directed towards this end if it is uh, hinged at this point it will be directed and this path will be open and water will be get lifted in upward direction whereas when it will be closing then it will be it will be uh, again positioned to its original condition and it will grab whole portion it will uh, it will be uh, it, it is going to grab the portion it means that it is going to uh, occupy this place or the grooves those are provided for it and it will be in a horizontal position and it will act as a one sided wall below that there is a suction point now so here this is a, a suction point where the strainer is provided the purpose of the strainer is that if there is a there exist a uh, impurities like uh, if the open vein will be there in that case there will be the bushes there will be the uh, leaves of the trees so there is a chance that they will be get sucked inside also along with that if their fishes are there they wish to enter th there is a chance that they will be entered in the chamber and it will be uh, they, they will come inside the impeller and if the impurities are going to be inside the impeller in that case through the eye when they are going to enter they are there is a chance that is clogging or choking of the eyes of the impeller so to avoid that we have to restrict the entry of the such type of the debris or the debris inside the suction pipe so to avoid that we have to provide the strainer that is a, a purpose of the strainer then this is about the uh, strainer foot wall suction pipe suction pipe is provided to suck the water and it starts from the eye of the impeller it is a uh, portion provided therein from that portion of the pump that is the center of the pump to the point up to which we want to lift the water this is a suction pipe then uh, casing that is a casing is provided to restrict or the leakage of the water from the impeller and this is a closed casing after the casing there exist a pressure gauge that is a uh, used for measurement of the pressure of the outlet pressure at the outlet of the pump so after pump has uh, impeller has imparted the pressure uh, the, sorry kinetic energy that is a centrifugal force after that there is a conversion of the kinetic energy to the pressure energy and how much pressure is generated if you want to measure then in that case we have to provide the pressure gauge and this is a delivery flange number of the times it is also called as a non return wall nrv it is as like as a one uh, one way wall which is exactly in, works in opposite sense sorry it is works in the same portion same sense that of the foot wall it means they, it allows the movement of the water only in a one direction and restricts the means it is going to allow the movement of the water from the impeller to the upward direction and it restricts the movement from upward direction to the impeller it is used to maintain the water level from this point up to the 
फुट वॉल देन द नेक्स्ट पोर्शन इज द डिलीवरी पाइप डिलीवरी पाइप इज यूज टू कन्वे द वाटर फ्रॉम द पंप टू द पॉइंट वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू डिस्चार्ज इट और वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू हैव इट सो हियर हियर इट इज शोन एज अ ओवर हेड वाटर टैंक इट मीन्स दैट दिस पंप इज यूज फॉर द लिफ्टिंग ऑफ द वाटर फ्रॉम द से फ्रॉम द सम्प फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ द बिल्डिंग टू द टॉप ऑफ द बिल्डिंग so this is about the uh, different component parts now the part which uh, we i had discussed that we have to maintain the water inside the same so why to maintain the water uh, or the initially uh, why to maintain the water here in in the inside the centri- uh, inside the suction pipe inside the casing inside the impeller up to the point somewhat above the end of the casing that is up to the delivery flange we can say as the pump we are going to use here for the lifting of the water okay so for lifting up the water we want we want to have it's a we we want to lift the water so for lifting up the water it is going to work on the centrifugal force centrifugal action means we are going to discuss it's a working principle and for discussing about the working principle we are we will go in the next slide so working principle of the centrifugal pump it works on the a centrifugal action that is lifting of the water by imparting the centrifugal force and the generation of the negative pressure at the eye of the impeller so how it happens so so when we are going to have the water inside the a chamber this is a chamber in which the liquid will be there which we want to lift here we want to lift the water so liquid will be the water so when we are going to rotate that impeller in that case whatever the liquid will be there in the eyes of the uh, sorry in the fans of the impeller that liquid will be thrown outside it that liquid will be thrown outside here rotation is in a anti clockwise direction so when it is going to rotate in a anti clockwise direction whatever the amount of the or whatever the mass of the fluid or the water which has been has been there in in between those two fans that mass of the liquid will be thrown outside and when it will be thrown outside in that case it it's a kinetic energy is going to increase and that kinetic energy is nothing but the increase in the kinetic energy is due to the centrifugal action that is a throwing the liquid or throwing throwing the mass from the center to the periphery or from inside portion to the outside portion and that action we is to consider it as a centrifugal action and when that mass will be thrown outside say here there is a some mass it will be thrown outside it means that if all the mass nearby it is thrown outside in that case there will be generation of negative pressure at the eye of the impeller it means that each this portion is going to act as a negative point negative pressure point and if there is a negative pressure point there will be the suction point and as this point is connected to the pipe and pipe is inserted submerged in the water so that water will be directly sucked but in between if there exist a, a air it means that in previous slide i had discussed that is a why to fill it by a liquid which we want to suck that is a water if we don't have the sufficient water there used to have a air so along with the air there will be the water and the centrifugal action which will be there provided to the water it will not be sufficient as the air is a compressible fluid up to some extent so air will be get compressed and there will not be the chance of throwing the air outside so instead of that it will provide the liquid which you want to throw outside that is a water that is incompressible fluid we can say that will be thrown outside so that instead of getting compressed it will be get along with the compression it will be get delivered or it will be pressed outside so whenever we are going to press it outside it's a it's a pressure is going to increase and at the same time the pressure at the point from which it will be get sucked or the open portion which you have provided that portion the pressure is going to reduce that is a generation of negative pressure so and uh, we will discuss in the uh, we will take the help of the previous slide so uh, as we have a water in this whole chamber this chamber this delivery pipe and this suction pipe 
so when that centrifugal action is going to be imparted to the amount of the water which is present in the all the fans or the impeller that will be thrown outside and as the chamber is the closed chamber that is casing is a closed one as it is thrown outside it means that there is a, a negative pressure and this negative pressure point is connected to the pipe and the pipe is inserted in the water and there is already water exist in that so that water from the pipe will be get sucked inside and at the same time the thrown water by the centrifugal action it will be moved or pushed towards the delivery point this is the working principle of the centrifugal pump that is imparting a centrifugal action to the liquid which is there in a impeller and generating the negative pressure at the eye so that there will be the continuous sucking of the liquid so this is about the working principle of the a centrifugal pump now uh, <clears throat> we will discuss the uh, next part that is uh, the procedure that is uh, how the pump is going to be operate how the pump is going to be operate whenever we are going to have its uh, operation so uh, so we will discuss now one by one that is the first operation required for the operation of the centrifugal pump proper operation of the centrifugal pump is the priming the priming is the process of filling the water in the uh, pump that is the filling of this whole portion that is from delivery point that is this point we can say that is a point above the casing to this point up to the uh, footwall and a strainer filling it with it completely with the water that process is called as a priming of the pump and why will the priming is required the priming is required to have the proper sucking of the water from by the pump and for the priming uh, number of the pump number of the times the pumps are provided with a, a small opening here here used to exist opening if the opening is not there in that case we have to remove this delivery pipe from the flange and we have to insert the water inside it up to this point so that all the air uh, all the air or all the air packets we can say will be get removed from the uh, pump that is from a suction pipe from the casing from the impeller up to this point that procedure is called as a priming and priming is essentially required to have the sucking of the liquid this is a priming firstly we have to go for priming we have to ensure the priming firstly after priming the next operation is we have to start the motor or whatever the prime mover prime mover to which we have connected our pump then after rotation of the prime mover the pump is going to that impeller is going to rotate initially there will not be any sucking of the water as the required amount of the centrifugal force will not be generated by the impeller after a certain time that is after getting a required number of the rotations there will be the starting of the sucking of the water from this end and there will be the at delivery end we will observe the water but we have to close the delivery wall to ensure that the whatever the fluid inside is inside there or whatever the negative pressure is generated at the eye of the impeller that is sufficient to the sucking of the water then after that <clears throat> uh, we have to go for opening the delivery wall it is that after ensuring that a strong vacuum that is a strong negative pressure so that water will be get sucked that is at the proper number of rotations after that we have to open the delivery wall and we have to allow the water to come outside it then the next one is at the time of the stopping the pump or the motor if the you know, it is a general consideration that whenever there is exist a centrifugal pump then we have to provide the non return wall here it is a nrv we can say because if nrv will be provided in that case after the stopping of the pump whatever the amount of the water will be there inside this pipe it will be stopped here only but if you have if there is no provision of the nrv that is non return wall in that case amount of the water which is lift which is lifted up to this point or which is there in inside this delivery pipe it will be it will move in a reverse direction up to the our foot wall and there will be the high water hammer effect on the foot wall and number of the times it happens that the foot wall used to get uh, broken here or it used to get escaped from the pipe to which it has been connected a number of the times it happens that the pipes those are connected to the uh, 
centrifugal pump that is a center of the pump they they used to get escaped from the connections so to avoid that we should have the nrv we have to continuously uh, check that if the nrv is operating or not so this is a general operating uh, operating principles we can say or the general sequence of operation of the centrifugal pump now uh, after that uh, after this we are going to discuss about the <coughs> work done by the centrifugal the work done by the impeller on the a centrifugal pump or a liquid we can say but before proceeding to that we will discuss about the exactly what is the difference between a centrifugal pump and the turbine so in case of the turbines this left hand side diagram it shows a turbine uh, fence of the turbine and this shows the fence of the impeller that is for a centrifugal pump in this whatever the flow used to be there at the outer periphery we used to assume it to be a radial to have a maximum efficiency and the water is directed from this inlet chamber and it is to move or it used to do a work on the vein and it is to come at the outside the exactly a reverse mechanism used to exist in the centrifugal pumps so this is the center of the rotation here we are finding this is inlet velocity triangle this is outlet velocity triangle for the a centrifugal pump sorry for the turbine it is a, a reaction turbine we have considered radial flow reaction turbine i have considered and this is for a centrifugal pump that is a radial flow or radial flow pump we have considered so here we are finding this this is a rotation this is a center of rotation here this is the inlet point this is a outlet point at the inlet there exists here as a eye of the impeller and through the eye water is getting directed towards the vein so whenever the water will be directed towards the vein it will be radially it means that if this is a radially in that case the velocity of the whirl at the inlet point will be zero it means that the velocity v1 and the velocity of the flow vf1 will be directed along the same line and the actual velocity with which the water will be sucked inside the vein that is a relative velocity v r1 and we are going to assume that the angle made by the actual velocity it is a vr1 that is a theta with respect to the horizontal or along the tangents so this is the tangent at inlet and this is the a tangent at the outlet periphery and we are going to assume treat those tangents as a horizontal lines as the impeller is rotating here rotation is i had shown in a anti clockwise direction impeller is rotating it means that at this point there exist a tangential velocity the tangential velocity we are going to assume as u as this is as the inlet point it is a point 1 so this will be u1 so along the tangent there will be the tangential velocity so from this point that is the actual velocity we will have in the horizontal direction towards the left hand side that because it is rotating towards the anti clockwise direction that is will be u1 it is a tangential velocity and from end of the tangential velocity up to the inlet point there will be the velocity of the flow or the velocity v1 of the flow with which it will be uh, directed towards the eye of the impeller and alpha that is the angle made by the v1 that is the velocity of the jet we have considered therein here we can say that velocity of the sucked water that v1 with respect to horizontal will be alpha and that alpha will be 90 degree because this is a tangential velocity and we are assuming that the flow uh, assuming that the flow will be radially moving radially inside so this will be radially inside means a radius will be perpendicular to the tangent so angle made by this velocity of the flow with respect to the horizontal that is with respect to the tangential velocity will be a 90 degree and the velocity of the whirl at the inlet will be zero similarly when the water is going to come outside of the fan that is a uh, after the rotation of the uh, impeller it will be having the maximum kinetic energy that is a v2 will be more than that of the v1 we can say in general and as it is a rot it will be directed outside so the actual velocity with which it will be directed outside it will be along this point and this is nothing but the along the tangent of the tangent at the outlet point so this will be v r2 that is the actual velocity of the flow with which it will be escaped from the fin towards the casing that is a v r2 
an angle made by this actual velocity with respect to the horizontal that we are going to assume as a phi means this is the angle phi which has been made by the outlet tip with respect to the horizontal this is the a phi then the velocity of the flow it will be radially outward so it will be uh, along the radius this is therein and it will be perpendicular to the uh, horizontal line as at the at the outlet the tangential velocity of the impeller will be the maximum similarly uh, here we have seen in the uh, uh, turbines at inlet there is a maximum at outlet there is a less because a less radius is there similarly here also the radius is more that is a relation we are knowing that between tangential velocity and angular velocity that is a phi equals to r omega omega will be the same one but the radius is going to be a maximum at the outlet point so the tangential velocity at the outlet will be more and it is going to start from the vr2 itself there is actual velocity end of the actual velocity so horizontal line along the horizontal line there will be tangential velocity but where it is going to end so if you start from the point the velocity with which that is a v2 we can say the actual uh, uh, the velocity of the net velocity of the flow that net velocity of the flow that there will be the casing outside it and through the casing the flow will be directed in this sense so it means that the velocity of the that uh, the, that velocity of the liquid would be directed in this sense and where it is going to cut to the horizontal line which you had drawn which is going to indicate a tangential velocity u2 and the angle made by this velocity v2 with respect to the horizontal we are going to assume it as a beta whereas angle made by the relative velocity with which it is going to be it is the actual velocity with which the water will be thrown outside from the vane that is a vr2 and the actual velocity with which the water will be moved further that is a velocity v2 and angles made by v2 as a beta vr2 as a phi and there will be the now the velocity of the hole at the outlet as while moving through the vane it is going to have the rotations about itself that vr2 will be from the end of the vf2 up to the crossing of tangential velocity and the v2 that is going to be represented by velocity of the whirl at the outlet so this is the uh, about the inlet and outlet velocity triangles and generally we used to assume that the flow has to be a radial one to have a maximum efficiency so velocity of the whirl we are going to assume it as a zero if there is a no radial flow in that case we have to assume that whatever the angle which is given for the v1 in that case there v1 and vf1 will not be the same one then we will have the v1 like this v1 if vf1 like this etc etc vf1 will be there in then v1 and then there will be the velocity of the whirl okay so this is about the difference between the velocity triangles for the turbine and the pump now the next part we are going to discuss about that is a, a work done by the impeller or a centrifugal pump on a 